I think the challenges in London are well known to us and, and one of the challenges within that is that they're pretty enduring. That's led a large number of uh, politically contentious uh, reconfigurations in South East London, in North East London. The nature of those changes and the huge interdependencies in services is pretty unique and will be unique in terms of its challenge for clinical commissioning groups. And so the challenge uh, for me and people working with those clinical commissioning groups has been about how we can support them as the future leaders to take forward those changes. I have to say that I came to that thinking, is this going to be possible? But one of the things I wanted to say today is, is that I have been hugely impressed, uh, both with their determination to do what they think is best for patients, to be honest about what the issues are, but also importantly to this debate, I think, their willingness to engage with their local populations in what I would describe as a very sincere, frank and candid uh, way. The service change programme in North West London is nine A&Es consulting to go to five. And we are also consulting, although it hasn't had many of the headlines, eight uh, out-of-hospital strategies, which <coughs> described uh, what services would be put in place should, ser should services within hospitals uh, change. And I think one of the things that um, uh, we tried to do there was build on the learning that there had been that it is very, very difficult to have a credible uh, discussion with the public unless you can describe the alternative. So progress, I think, is that I haven't seen a response yet that's come into the consultation that says the case for change has not been made. The reality of that is that I do not think we would have been consulting at this stage in the game on, on those type of proposals, uh, at least getting to a place where stakeholders are saying the case for change is made without having clinical commissioning groups driving that change. When you strip it back about what the reforms are really trying to do, they're around empowering clinical leaders. It's about um, designing care around the needs and choices of patients. And I think, you know, if you point to the stroke work, that is what occurred there. Um, and it's focusing on the evidence. From that, I take a degree of continuity in terms of what we know works in London and what the reforms uh, uh, are there to do. I'm sure there's a debate about whether people think they will do that, but that's essentially what, what they're there to do. How do we take forward and build on the work that we've already done um, and drive forward a significant strategic agenda when not one organisation is, in brackets, in charge? What's the respective roles? Who does what? I, I'm finding at the moment a huge amount of my time is taken up talking to people who have uh, been appointed to new organisations in rooms saying, who's doing what? organisational complexity is likely to increase in the new system. You might say that's an understatement, but I think that's true, and that's by virtue of the numbers of organisations that have been created. But I do believe strongly we must not get distracted by that. In the new world, no one organisation can solve all of the challenges, um, but the relationships and the alignment of our ambition, it feels to me, are going to be what's really, really uh, key. I think the Commissioning Board has a duty to be proactive in initiating the discussions, building the, pro uh, the relationships, bringing people around the table. And I think it's the nature of those relationships uh, which is going to have the most profound effect as to whether we can take forward the, the um, agenda in London. The Commissioning Board in London will be a very significant commissioner in its own right. So it will be commissioning uh, around £5 billion of care, which is about a third of all care in London. And uh, in, in that essence, uh, it is in a place to be able to have, uh, I think, quite uh, powerful conversations uh, with stakeholders in terms of being able to try and align how it, it commissions those services to uh, support the system to deliver what it needs to deliver. 
My own view is we need to create a strategic coalition of the partners uh, across London uh, with some urgency, energy and ambition to uh, build on the, 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 the changes. We've already started that. I passionately believe we've got to capitalise on the clinical energy for change. There is huge energy there. We need to develop the new commissioning system. Uh, we now have 32 CCGs. We've put a lot of time and effort into the commissioning support organisations that are going to support those. We should explore how we can work with local authorities to help um, develop those, those further. It, leading across organisational boundaries and what that actually means. Do we understand uh, how, we can, how we can make that work? Feels absolutely essential. That's where care gets delivered uh, in the NHS. Um, and I think we need to be honest about uh, what's required uh, of all of us uh, to, to deliver on that, what we need to give um, in, in, in that uh, discussion. And I think we need to be courageous in, in how we take it forward. Thank you.